Welcome everyone to a special edition of Hawthorne Fan TV in isolation. I'm here in isolation in my uh, palatial estate, not really, and joining me is a good friend of ours here on Hawthorne Fan TV in his long sleeve Hawthorne top. Look at that beautiful thing of a top. Nick, welcome to Hawthorne Fan TV in isolation. Hey Rod, it's an absolute treat to see your your beautiful face. I've uh, I've missed you and the Hawks and Hawthorne at Fan TV and everything in between. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to getting back, aren't we? We are very much looking forward to getting back. When we get back, we don't know, but it seems to be mid to late June seems to be the popular view at the moment. Do you think it will be mid to late June? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. That's for sure. I think. Um, you know, a bit of chatter around uh, in the last few days about training resuming on May 18 with a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the interstate players uh, flying back to, to Melbourne and Victoria um, to, to get back into training and uh, around all the other states to do their isolation there. So um, certainly something in the works. How have you kept, I mean, obviously we haven't had footy for what, about five or six weeks now. How have you uh, kept yourself entertained, if you can keep yourself entertained when there's literally been no sport? Well, I got a new job just before um, the Ooh. virus hit, so that's kept me pretty busy and um, doing my last semester at uni. But that's all pretty boring. I think um, the the main thing that, uh, aside from all the boring stuff, has been um, the AFL Evolution game and taking the keys of Clarko's Ferrari and um, playing around a bit with the Hawks. And I know you've been a bit of a fan of that as well. Yeah, we were talking about it before we came on about the game. Yeah. I mean, it's not a great game, AFL Evolution 2, but in the scenario we're in at the moment, it's a good game to, you know, to kill a couple of hours. I mean, there's glitches, there's, you know, it's not the perfect game. But if you're bored and want to kill a couple of hours, it's the perfect game to just, uh, you know, lose your mind in. And as you say, take the reins of Hawthorne, which you've done and which I'm currently doing, and uh, make, make, some, make some moves. How many seasons in are you? Oh, I'm only about two in, but, um, yeah, look, it's, it's a bit clunky, as you said. Um, and as we know, AFL is a really hard game to replicate, but... Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully one year we'll get we'll get EA Sports on board, and um, you know that that will surely fix it up if we can get a big um, big company like that onto it. I think that I think that's the key to the game taking that next step is getting a big brand like EA Sports to do it. But whether they will is the big question. Let's yeah, talk about the probably, quick left. Let's yeah. talk about the real stuff. Obviously, yeah, we absolutely. played one game and we had one win against Brisbane. A very good win against Brisbane at the MCG. What are your uh, memories of the game? Well, I mean, yeah, we, we were discussing before, and it's 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 been um it's been a long time in between drinks, but the Hawks were they were incredibly impressive. I thought I thought it was yeah. um you know considering we were coming up against a side that we hadn't beaten since 2016, um, probably playing at the MCG really helped us there. But um, look, I thought we were really really impressive. Um, you know, Wingard played his best game for the club by a mile. Easily. He sensational. See Tom Mitchell back. Um, and I just thought everything, uh, the game plan just came off, and uh, it was just really nice to kind of tick that um, that monkey off our back, which was uh, not being able to beat Brisbane in, um, in quite some time. Tom Mitchell, I mean, as we know, he didn't play at all in 2019. Didn't look like he missed the beat. I mean, topped the disposals for yeah. us once again. He just fitted in like he hadn't been away. Just amazing how he just does it like that. Simple as that. Absolute, absolute superstar. He's certainly a favourite of mine, I think, um, He's such a true professional, but as funny as it sounds, I kind of think this um, the coronavirus lockdown will almost um, help him. I mean, um, he, he he was quoted after the game saying he didn't think his leg was still back to where it would be, and it probably won't be for some time. But he'll get have taken some really big confidence out of that game for one, and um, this this last couple of weeks will have given him an opportunity to um, to get some more strength and conditioning to his legs. And I know over the Hawthorne socials, we've seen that his girlfriend. Um, has been taking him in some uh, Pilates. Yes. Uh, uh, have, did you do it? Did you follow that tutorial, Arod? I can imagine. I, 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 I watched yeah. it, but uh, I'm not the most flexible person going around, so I didn't uh, take part. But I did uh, watch a couple of minutes of it. But uh, no, I, I would uh, probably break in half if I tried any of that. Did you have a crack? I did have a crack. I've got to be oh. honest. I've been used to all the um, all the online fitness stuff. I mean, um, with with gyms closing and everything, um, you got to. You've got to do what you can to keep yourself sane. But um, just just back on the Hawks, I was kind of thinking about it a little bit before about the team. and It, it looks like we'll have Impey back yeah. and probably Hardwick back for round two, as funny as that sounds. Well, I reckon Impey will probably be back. They reckon it's going to be August. So I still yeah. reckon they're going to be a bit patient with him. So maybe August. So that might be, who knows, 
round six to eight or who knows. But I think Hardwick's an absolute lock for round two. So, you know, when he did that uh, injury in the uh, preseason against St Kilda, and you see oh, he's out for 10 weeks, like, oh, no, yeah. no one of our key backmen gone. Yeah. And he could be back by round two. But in that game against Brisbane, I don't think many people really gave us a chance because Brisbane, yeah. you know, according to some people, are premiership fancy. But they never really looked at at all. And we were switched on pretty much from the opening bounce. And Brisbane really didn't show a yelp. And Sean Burgoyne, I oh. mean, you, you, you didn't know a happier was... man than me when he re-signed. And for a 38-year-old in his 380th game or whatever it is, just to play up forward, which I think he's going to do a lot this season, to kick yeah. three goals and just tear the Brisbane defence apart, the man just does nothing wrong. He's a marvel. He was... He was sensational. I mean, you know, whether he goes on again next year due to this lockdown, we'll wait and see. But I certainly think there's a spot for him in the Ford pocket. I mean, he made it look so easy. Some of those goals he kicked were absolutely sensational. And, um, you know, although he's going to lose pace and he's going to lose some conditioning, but one thing he's not going to lose is, is uh, his silk, silkiness and yeah. and his game smarts. And I think, um, yeah, just his influence around the ground is, is, is going to really um, be huge for the side. So, Hopefully, I mean, can he make 400? That would well, be amazing. I think he wants to. I think he wants yeah. to get to 400. And if he stays injury-free once the season restarts, then I think we, sh- we should give him another year. Because after we saw in the Brisbane game, he's still making an impact. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, barring injury, he should be um, kept on. Season, when it restarts, what are, your, uh, what are your expectations from a Hawthorne perspective and from a league in general perspective? Look, from a Hawthorne perspective, I'll just be absolutely stoked to watch them play. I mean, mm. you know, I know a lot of people weren't impressed with the product that the AFL was providing in the first round, and it was really hard to watch. But yeah. I found that when the Hawks were playing, I was kind of able to put all that external noise to the side and just really enjoy the contest. It probably helped that we had such a terrific win. Uh, look, I'm expecting that Clarko has been sitting in isolation, locked up in his house, hatching a plan. I mean, On you know, they're farm. short... Yeah, exactly right. He looks like he's got a big uh, big piece of land um, in Cape Shank, I believe. But, yeah. um, you know, the 16-minute quarters were kind of thrown thrown towards the coaches at, at the last minute. And I, I thought, um, you know, obviously we did a great job to, to get the win in round one. But he's going to have hatched something, I believe, um, for, for the rest of the season that, um, look, will hopefully, um, will hopefully be sustainable because it's going to be like a season we've never seen before. Um, but, look, just watching the news tonight in terms of the AFL, it looks like Western Australia and South Australia, their, their border closures and um, whether people can come in or out, they're, they're going to remain um, pretty strict. Um, and that's that's causing a few headaches at um, AFL headquarters, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I think there's plenty more to go in terms of these restrictions from the uh, different uh, premiers around the state. So I think it's going to be very uh, interesting to watch. But let's hope footy comes back. Let's hope Hawthorne can continue the way we did after that impressive uh, Brisbane victory. Who knows what the fixture is even going to look like? Because apparently they're going to throw <laughs> out the fixture. So who knows what's going to happen well, in the it, new It's a fair choice. fixture, isn't it? it? It's going to be the fairest fixture of all time, uh, aside from where the games are played and obviously crowd noises. In terms of who you play, it can't get any fairer than this. I just hope we don't get shunted to uh, Sunday 3.20 and 4.40. I'm very vocal about <laughs> that. I hate those two time slots. Like last year, we got nine in the first 10 or whatever it was. Ridiculous. I will not stand for it, and I will take a stand. Nick, you're a superstar. Thanks for joining me in Hawthorne Fan TV in isolation in that beautiful, long uh, sleeve Hawthorne Guernsey. Hey, Rod, always great to talk. Thank you very much for having me. You're a great man.